Hey guys, my name's Elliot and today I'm going to be showing you just how easy it is to grow oyster mushrooms using one of our oyster mushroom growing kit. Whether that be a ready to go kit or a spawn voucher system, the process is exactly the same and we're going to be showing you that today. Everything that you need to grow mushrooms is included in one of our mushroom growing kits. All that you need as well is a kettle, some tape or other material for sealing, a sharp knife and a basin. Once you've received your spawn, you're ready to go. The first step is to open up your box and check that all of the components are in. Remember not to discard your box because this is going to form your grow environment. And the first step in the process is heat pasteurization. This is really, really important in mushroom farming because it prepares the substrate by killing competing bacteria and funguses and makes a really nice environment for your mushrooms to thrive in. So how are we gonna do it? We're gonna use heat pasteurization and it's a very simple process. You're simply gonna take our heat resistant bag, which has your substrate inside and fill it with three liters of boiling water. Although it's a heat resistant bag, once filled, it will get very hot, so please do take care when handling it. You can use any method for sealing. The most important thing is that you hold in the temperature so the process can happen efficiently. Now I'm gonna put this aside and leave it for around about eight hours until it's suitably cooled to below room temperature. Following that, you'll be ready for the next step. Once your grow bag and substrate is cool to the touch, it's ready for draining. To do this, simply cut off the two bottom corners and leave the bag in the upright position until no more water drains out. It's really important to have a clean workspace, so wash your hands and forearm thoroughly with soapy water before handling any of the spawn or the substrate. After you've done that, you're ready to move on to mixing. So we now have our fully pasteurized substrate and clean working environment. It's time to move on to mixing. To do that, we're just gonna open up the bag, tip in our whole bag of mushroom spawn, and make sure that there are no big bits. If there are, then these should be crumbled before they are tipped in. And once that's all in, we're then gonna go in and give it a really good mix very, very important to get an even distribution of spawn as this will ensure nice even growth and ultimately better fruiting. You can see now why it was so important to wash the forearms and hands. So, after that, we're now gonna roll down our bag and compress it to squeeze out any of the excess air. Again, this is really important as it allows the mycelium to knit together throughout the substrate and again, will result in better growth. So the next stage is to make the cuts in the bag from which your mushrooms ultimately will grow. To do that, I've put knife in boiling water again for a few moments just to sterilize it and we're then going to go and make x-shaped cuts in the bag of approximately three centimeters in length and we're going to do an even distribution i recommend that we use five cuts so just a little tip there's two ways that you can grow your mushroom kit you can either have it in the horizontal position this will often result in a greater yield or you could have it in the vertical position which will result in more naturally shaped oyster mushrooms if you're growing in the horizontal position, then you should only put your X-shaped cuts on one side of the bag. But if you're growing in the vertical position, you can feel free to cut both sides of the bag. Having fully prepared our grow bag, we're now ready for incubation. To do that, really, really simple. We're just gonna place the whole bag inside of our white liner. 
and wrap it up. And we're then gonna place the whole lot inside of the box. This is really good because it mimics the natural growing environment of the mushroom because it's warm and humid and it's precisely what it needs to have a strong run. We're then gonna take our box, close like this, and place it in a nice, consistently warm place in the house, possibly underneath a bed or just even a corner of the room. Incubation usually takes at least two weeks and you don't want to move on to the next stage until the mycelium is fully developed. So what we're gonna do is just quickly check in the box and see how we're getting on. How to do that, we're gonna open up the box, pull out your kit, and just peer into the X cuts. If you see nice, thick, white, cotton wool-like growth in all of your cuts, then the mycelium is well developed and you're probably ready to move on to fruiting. If you don't, then put the kit straight back into incubation for another week longer. So now that we have some really healthy mycelium, we're ready to move on to fruiting. But before we do that, we need to construct our grow environment. To do that, it's really simple. We're just gonna pull the white liner over the top edge of the flaps. And this effectively creates like a reverse greenhouse in that it blocks direct sunlight, but it maintains humidity. And that creates the perfect environment for your mushrooms to grow. Now that we've constructed our grow environment, we need to choose somewhere to put it. And what you're looking for is a place that has light, but without direct sunlight, nice consistent temperatures and draft free, possibly the corner of a room or even on a table. Once you've selected your place, you're then going to simply mist the whole area one to two times a day. And this provides sufficient humidity to encourage the mushrooms to grow. The ideal conditions for fruiting are similar to those of a shade loving plant. 